What's up world, it's Taj with another episode of OCN Watchlist. This week I'll be breaking down Game of Thrones episode 4. Before I do so, please take a moment as always to click the like and subscribe button for more awesome OCN video content. Let's begin. This week's episode was both climactic and dramatic as we draw nearer to the apex of the show's 8 year journey toward the final season's finale. After the visual and sensory overload of last week's epic battle for the diametrically opposed forces of life and death, we witness the heroes reconcile their traumatic experiences together and seek solace for those who have fallen. It is interesting to note that each character who lights a fire to burn the fallen hero had a direct connection to whoever passed. Daenerys burning Jorah Mormont and Sansa burning Theon, for example. It reflects a real human moment as the harsh realities of sacrifice and friendship are reflected symbolically at the cremation. Another great moment came during Jon's speech for the Fallen. It was very presidential, very emotional, very king-like. More on that later, but it's clear he is the people's true leader. The feast was a great tribute to the enduring power and strength of will. This time of commemoration reflects the completion of the cycle, the uncertainty before the battle, the destruction during, and the resolution afterwards. It is telling that even in the intimate aftermath of a nearly catastrophic event, the strategies and schemes are already beginning to unravel. Daenerys is clearly distraught by realizing the truth about Jon being a Targaryen, even scarier to see how people are naturally drawn to him without even knowing who he really is. Sansa is already calculating ways to secure the North and keep power on her own intact. One of my favorite smaller moments in this episode was a conversation between Sansa and the Hound. Sansa is certainly no little bird any longer, but it came at a great cost. This theme of players in the Game of Thrones being true to their nature is the best way to understand the show. For example, when Gendry tells Arya that he is now the new Lord of House Baratheon and asks her to be his lady, she kindly refuses him and says she is not a lady. The exact words she told her father Ned Stark in Season 1. This episode brilliantly reveals how uncertain and fragile power alliances really are, especially when there are multiple competing interests and dominant personality types fixated on a singular objective. Even the slightest disturbance can break the alliance apart. It may seem far-fetched, but ask my close friends and they'll verify it. I've been speculating about Game of Thrones for years. There are countless theories about what comes next, but Game of Thrones has a great long history of saying F you to you and your theories. I did predict, however, back in Season 3 that Jon was a Targaryen. Fun fact. The writing in this episode is brilliant because of the drama and interconnected stories. This episode demonstrates how desperate scenarios only unite people for a while, and when it's over, they return to their pre-described goals and ways of thinking. It is very hard to genuinely change a character's outlook and worldview. In two episodes, we're going to find out exactly how Game of Thrones ends, but the real intrigue of the show comes from understanding the subtext, which is and isn't said. If you think that the show has a happy ending, then you really haven't been paying attention. Rule number one, never assume anything in Game of Thrones. One of the most heartbreaking scenes for me, and there were a few, was how dirty Jamie Lannister did Brienne. At first I'm thinking, oh this is nice, and a long time coming. Jamie and Brienne doing the nasty, then seemingly out of nowhere, Jamie decides to leave Brienne and head back to King's Landing for Cersei? What the actual f Just when we start to love Jamie and his road to redemption, we realize, like I said earlier, that he hasn't actually changed and has been hateful just as he has always been. Disappointing, but true to the dark and barbaric world that is Game of Thrones. Moving on, I'm growing increasingly concerned for our beloved Khaleesi. How do we know that Daenerys is good? Could something send her over the edge? How do we know that Jon's real name will remain a secret? It won't. Will Tyrion and Varys remain loyal to her? Doesn't look like it. This episode was smart in how it reveals several fundamental truths about the nature of vice, military escalation, and the instability of the human psyche. These themes are consistent throughout the show, and at some point, the worst thing imaginable happens. How do characters react to what eventually drives that narrative forward? Spoiler alert, Cersei loves playing with fire and sees Game of Thrones as a zero-sum game. She is profoundly hateful and vicious, and her skill lies in bringing these attributes out in others. The old saying goes that what you fight against, you become. Killing Masande at the end is the worst nightmare for Grey Worm, and likely Daenerys as well. Daenerys can only succeed if she is better than Cersei, but this may bring the Dragon Queen down to her level. On that note, the public beheading of Masande was a throwback to the brutality that is Game of Thrones, and while we knew she was probably going to die eventually, seeing it like this was a tough one for sure. Plus, seeing Rhaegal get shot down from the sky was also brutal and unexpected. 
If nothing else, in this episode, Thrones truly got back to its roots with brutal deaths in the episode, which, as a longtime diehard fan of the show, was nice to see. Well, one thing is certainly for sure. Shit is about to get crazy next week. Another epic battle is on the horizon, and good news, haters! This time, it looks like it's fought during the day, so you'll actually be able to see it. Danny has one dragon and about 11 Unsullied, so we'll see how that goes. I'm hoping we see Arya have some nice fighting sequences. You know Grey Worm is about to go Unsullied apeshit uh, with the loss of his love, and maybe hopefully we'll finally get to see the Clegane Bowl, the Hound versus the Mountain. Anyways, this episode was incredible. I loved it. There's only two left. A little nervous to see how it's all going to come together, but here we are. That about does it for this week's episode of OCN Watchlist Thrones Edition. Did you watch last night's episode? If so, let me know what you think in the comments below. And don't forget, it's most important that you follow me on both Instagram and Twitter at OCN underscore Watchlist for more daily content. See you next week on the OCN Watchlist.